Hey guys, it's Leopold the Brave here, and I figured, hey, let's do more fictional fights related videos while you guys are waiting for Sora vs. Dante, which is still probably not going to come until next year, but it'll definitely be earlier than late February, like I was predicting. So today, we are going to be re-reviewing episodes and sort of maybe explaining the reasons further why a character won, or explaining the reasons why I've changed my mind on a character. So here we go. So Jin vs. Ryu is the first episode, obviously. And nope, I still agree with it. Jin curb stomps Ryu. He actually really curb stomps Ryu now with the new research, the new updated research I've gotten with Jin in the past year. So yeah, nothing's really changed. He won back then because of his superior speed, his uh, more impressive arsenal and durability and all that stuff. And now it's even more enhanced with my new research. At the start of the show, I was originally going to have him fight Sasuke, but I decided to change my mind because I kept hearing that Sasuke was super duper OP. I don't mind Jin losing, but I'd at least like to see it be a close battle. But some new research came up like in the past year that I discovered, and now they're like on equal terms, so they're actually capable of holding their own episode without it being a stomp. So that's why I'm doing Jin vs. Sasuke now instead of doing it back then. Next up is Rayman vs. Spyro, and again, I agree with this one. This episode's sort of a lesson on flashiness versus actual power. Like, Rayman is not as flashy as Spyro, but his attacks are still much stronger. Spyro can spit fire and electricity and all that cool stuff, and he has a dragonfly that gives him shields and stuff. And while Rayman only throws simple punches, those simple punches can punch rocket ships across three constellations. So yeah, Rayman's pretty OP. Plus he has a wider arsenal and greater speed and all that cool stuff. Oh boy, my first controversial episode, Danny vs. Jake Long. I still agree with this one, even after all the comments. Even after the episode got removed off of YouTube for copyright multiple times and I had to move it to another channel. After all it's been through, I still agree with it. So let's go over a few of the main points that people are still stuck with. So I made a point about how um, Danny beating dragons shouldn't count because they're ghost dragons and he beat them by taking their amulet. Something that Jake doesn't rely on so he couldn't do that to defeat Jake. So people's counter-argument to this is an episode, like, early on in the series, when Danny gives Paulina an amulet that turns her into the dragon when she's angry, or Sam or whatever, and he beats that dragon by knocking it out without removing the amulet. Again, he beat that big, dumb dragon by outsmarting it. He didn't beat it with, like, brute force alone. It was him, like, outsmarting it and tricking it to wear it down, like he does with all of his enemies. He exposes their weaknesses and then exploits it. But the issue is, Jake also does the same thing, and Jake is much smarter and more skilled than Danny or those dragons that Danny fought. Jake has martial arts training, he's way better at evading tax attacks than Danny, and he has knowledge of all magical and mythical creatures, including ghosts and all that stuff. So he'd know how to fight Danny and exactly how to beat him. Trust me, Danny's not that skilled. If you watch him fight, he'll dodge like two attacks in the air and then get hit by the third one. Like nearly every single time. He's not that good at fighting. Heck, there was an episode where Danny changed the future, so um, Vlad never had ghost powers, and his dad did, and when he fought Vlad, who didn't have any ghost powers, and Danny still had ghost powers, he still lost to Vlad and had to be saved by his mom and dad. I love Danny Phantom, but he sucks at fighting! So yeah, Jake still wins. Next up is episode 4, Ty vs. Crash. In my opinion, this is the most forgettable episode of Fictional Fights. It was also the shortest, I think. And I really do not have anything to say about this episode except that I still agree with it. I... I honestly have no clue what to talk about. I have nothing in preparation. I don't even remember what half the episode is like. <laughs> this is so forgettable. But I'm happy Crash won. Yay. Episode 5, Krillin vs. Hihachi. I still agree with it, but I hate it. Watching Heihachi lose for me is like the equivalent of the Dragon Ball Z fans watching Goku get lobotomized by Superman in Goku vs. Superman 2. That's how bad it is. I even gave Heihachi buffs and he still lost. I've said this before in like a Q&A or something, but I'll say it again. I'm the Tekken fanboy who says that Dragon Ball Z's Krillin, of all characters in Dragon Ball Z, Krillin, beats Heihachi even when Heihachi has buffs, because I did give Heihachi buffs by letting him use Spirit Kyoto, even though it's not something he can activate at will, it was just a one-time thing. But I still let him use it anyways, and he still loses to Krillin, so Heihachi, with buffs, loses to Dragon Ball Z's Krillin, says a Tekken fanboy. So remember that before you ever call fictional fights biased. 
Apparently, the lesson of this episode didn't get across. It's about don't judge a character by its appearance. Stitch is a cute little floofball alien, and Toothless is like a deadly, awesome dragon who breathes fire. But Stitch wins, and people really don't seem to see it. Stitch can lift 3,000 times his own weight. I'm pretty sure that's enough to lift Toothless, and his claws can rip through metal. Meanwhile, the Vikings in How to Train Your Dragon have killed thousands and millions of dragons with very primitive weapons like spears and knives and just anything sharp. So Stitch could easily tear through Toothless's flesh. Also, Stitch is fireproof, bulletproof, and he tanked a volcanic explosion that sent him flying up towards the ship at the speed of sound. Stitch is honestly on another level. Toothless is literally one of the most basic fantasy dragons I've ever seen. And I love the How to Train Your Dragon movies. They're so good, they're so magical and amazing, and I love them. But Stitch wins. Why did I make this episode? This is a stupid episode. Of course Katara wins. I don't need to explain this one. Katara stomps. Elsa's never fought before. This is so plain stupid. I'll be sure to give Katara a proper challenge in the future. I hate this episode. I don't agree with this episode. I want to delete this episode, but I can't. It's part of the series, and I wish it wasn't. I wish it never existed. Ooh, time for another controversial episode, Ippo versus Little Mac. Now the thing with this fight, people seem to get Little Mac confused. They take cartoony as superhuman, when it doesn't quite work that way. There are only three characters I can think of who are somewhat superhuman, Mr. Sandman, Bald Bull, and Don Flamenco. Don Flamenco because he punched a bull into the air, Bald Bull because he withstood a bull's charge, and then Mr. Sandman because he destroyed a building with his punches. Now, one thing people assume is that Mr. Sandman destroyed the building with one punch, but no, he destroyed it with multiple punches. You can see that he switches arms in the panels, showing that it's multiple punches, so it could have taken like him like a million punches to destroy that building. But anyways, as for the other characters, I really don't think we can scale Little Mac in power to them, because Little Mac never beats them with strength, he beats them by wearing down their stamina and evading their attacks. Every character in the game has a stronger attack than Little Mac, even Glass Joe. Little Mac can't even damage King Hippo through his sewer lid, or Glass Joe through his headgear, and he can't even make a sandbag move, he can barely make a sandbag move with his punches. Meanwhile, Ippo can bruise people through headgear, nearly knock sandbags off the chains, and he actually does a beat, he actually does beat his opponents with strength, so he can be scaled to them. He fought someone who could punch with two tons of force, and he arm wrestled Takamura to a near draw, and Takamura, like, knocked out a bear. Ippo can also keep up in speed with Miyata, who is fast enough to create after images, while Little Mac doesn't have any impressive speed feats. Yeah, I could bring up Piston Hondo and how he out outran a bullet train, but that's not really displayed in combat speed. If you look at the punch out timer, the fastest punch comes out in a fourth of a second, and Little Mac can throw four punches per second. So that's nowhere near as fast as Ippo, who has reacted to nine punches per second. Plus, all of Little Mac's opponents are dumb and cocky and sort of fool around with him and underestimate him. When Mac is put up against another underdog like himself, but who's more skilled and stronger and has better stats, then he's gonna have a lot of trouble and end up losing. Let's not forget, Mac loses if he goes down three times. Ippo can keep getting up and fight even while he's unconscious. So he has a greater stamina, too. Little Mac gets worn out if he misses too many punches, blocks too many punches, or takes too many hits. Meanwhile, Ippo can continuously throw punches for an entire round, even when he's unable to breathe. And he can go for 6 rounds and wear down the stamina of opponents who can go for 10 rounds, while Mac is stuck at 3 rounds only. So Ippo's just all around greater. Oh, another thing, people like to bring up Donkey Kong, but there's no actual confirmation that Mac actually beat him. In Mac's last stand, the game is over once you lose three times. There's no, like, set story or canon of who Mac loses to. And since Donkey Kong is the third opponent, and you, the game obviously ends when you lose three times, it's clearly meant to symbolize that Donkey Kong actually beats Mac and defeats him, and that's why he quits boxing and retires and all that stuff. There's no canon proof that Mac beat Donkey Kong, and plus we don't see Donkey Kong even destroy the arena, so he's obviously not using his full power. A hey, back-to-back controversial episodes, Mario vs. Sonic. This one's pretty controversial because I explained the results in a very poor way. I had rushed the script because I was doing school finals at the time, and I didn't quite get all the details in. There's a lot more reasons why Mario beats Sonic. Mario's better reality warping powers with the Star Rod, all the insane universal RPG feats and all that stuff. So again, there's just a lot of things like that. Mario has multiple confirmed universal feats, while the only thing Sonic has coming close to universal is that thing in Sonic and the Secret Rings with Darkspine, Sonic, and Alphalea Walela. But 
Not only is he not confirmed universe level because he only says he's going to remake the reality in his own image, nothing about the universe, but they were also in a universe consisting of only the Arabian Nights only, so that's a very small universe. Not only that, but Sonic also asked for Shara's power. So Sonic received outside help against an opponent who isn't even confirmed universal. Unlike Mario, who has multiple confirmed universal feats that you can actually visually see. So yeah, it's really a no-brainer. There's just a lot of angry Sonic fanboys out there. Okay, let me get something straight for people who haven't seen this episode. I made this literally right before Rebecca Sugar turned Steven into an OP superpowered monster. <laughs> before they had so much similarities, they were, you know, sort of awkward but cheery kids, you know, that kind of stuff. And they went on adventures and yada yada yada. And then, as soon as the episode went up and Dipper won because of his superior technology and brains and all that, Rebecca Sugar decided, hey, I'm deciding that Steven all of a sudden knows how to use his powers now. She gave him flight, she gave him this cool spike thing with his bubble shield, she gave him way better feats all of a sudden, she gave him the ability to like his molded shield and use it to grab objects, so... She just turned Steven conveniently OP right after I uploaded that episode. So yeah, I disagree with it now. Steven obliterates Dipper. So, yeah. Next up is Akuma vs. Ganondorf. This is an episode that Animation Rewind re-uploaded and got the show a huge, massive boost in popularity, so huge thank you to him again for that. I still agree with this episode, but like Mario vs. Sonic, I still feel like the results were still poorly explained, because some people in the comments were confused at how on earth Ganondorf was country level, and that's because his magic can affect the entire land of Hyrule no matter where he is, he can affect the entire land at once with his evil, so... That does technically make him country level. While he's not destroying or creating that amount of land, he still is affecting it and controlling it in some sort of way. And he's faster, he has greater speed feats, and he has more variety in his magic. Akuma is a lot like Ryu. He's a very basic fighter, just martial arts and projectiles. The only hacks they ever have is like the Raging Demon, which could have killed Ganondorf, but again, he's still much faster and his magic is superior, so... Defeating Akuma would be a piece of cake for Ganondorf. A lot of people were confused at this matchup. I thought it was a good idea. I thought they had lots of pretty cool similarities. Pit is an angel working for Palutena, and he leads his own army. Kazi is like a half-demon, basically controlled by the devil, and he has his own army. And they can both shoot light thingies, or lasers, or whatever, like Kazi with his forehead lasers and Pit with his light arrows. I just... I thought it was a good idea, okay? They had a lot more in common than you think. But I still agree with it due to Pit's nature of being light and his better experience and greater arsenal and all that stuff, and the Devil Gene having a weakness to divine and angelic beings, and yada yada yada, so I still agree with it. Pitt wins. <sighs> this episode... This episode caused so much hassle because of Death Battle. <laughs> but unlike Mario vs. Sonic, I did it first! I don't think I really need to explain this one though, because I've gone over it so many times in the past, and the majority of people who saw both episodes do agree that Death Battles was kinda whack. And sadly, most of the disagreements came from Overwatch's salty fanbase. Unfortunately, they seem to have caught Five Nights at Freddy's Syndrome. You know where something normally adult is turned slightly more kid-friendly, and then all of a sudden kids flock to it because it makes them feel adult? You know, like how horror games are mostly adults, but then that childish Five Nights at Freddy's stuff came out, and then children flock to it thinking they're horror game experts? Same with Overwatch, because first-person shooters are normally bloody and mature and adult, and then all of a sudden Overwatch bright and colorful, no blood, and then kids flock to it thinking they're adult because they play a first-person shooter. So yeah, most of the negative feedback was pretty much Overwatch salt. All the people who like both or dislike both or like TF2 more, the majority seem to agree with me. I don't know what it is about this episode, but people love it. I don't know what I did. What did I do? I'm not complaining or anything. I'm very happy that people liked it, but I made it just like I made every other episode. What's what's different? What's so special about this episode that other episodes didn't have? Was it the matchup? Because yeah, it's an odd matchup, but it really makes sense when you get down to it. So maybe people just thought it was a very unique idea and they agreed with the episode. I do too. But wow, people love this episode to a ridiculous level. It set a record for the show that I feel like only Jin vs. Sasuke could beat if it gets out. Come on, I need an animator. <laughs> but as for the results, there's not much I can say about it. I do agree with it. Kung Fu Panda 3 really made Poe super duper OP and all the extra details in it, like the immortality, chi stealing, chi giving, overflowing. All this crazy chi stuff that made Poe absolutely obliterate Aang.
Ah, Master Roshi versus Jiraiya. I still agree with this one. Roshi has unfortunately fallen with age. He doesn't participate in most of the fights that the other Z fighters participate in, so he doesn't really scale to most of the enemies in Dragon Ball Z. People think it's impressive that he beat some of Frieza's soldiers, but again, those soldiers were even strong enough to hold Piccolo's weighted clothing, so defeating them is not a very impressive feat and certainly not impressive enough for Roshi to beat Jiraiya. Jiraiya is faster and could literally one-shot Roshi from the very beginning by turning him into a frog. So there's not much to say here as I haven't gotten many arguments against this episode, except for the moon feet. People seem to really like that Roshi moon feet, even though characters in Dragon Ball Z have not reached moon level until Raditz showed up. So, I mean, if Roshi was moon level, he would have been able to defeat Raditz by himself. So that moon feet of Roshi's back in the original Dragon Ball is a huge outlier. So it can't be counted and Jiraiya wins. Zim vs. Kiroro is a matchup I wanted to do for a long time before I even came up with fictional fights. In fact, the first thing I said to myself when I first saw Sergeant Frog is, wow, this is a Japanese invader Zim. They literally have so much in common that I don't even know why Death Battle hasn't done this one yet. It just seems like one of the most obvious matchups, but I do think Zim wins due to his superior hacks thanks to his Urken technology. I mean, the Kiro Ball does give Kiro pretty good hacks, but it runs out of energy quite quickly, and Kiro doesn't even have it most of the time, so it can't even be considered his standard equipment, because it's usually always in someone else's possession, whether it be Fuyuki or Natsumi or whatever. And most of Kero's technology are one-time things created by Kulalu that usually get destroyed after an episode or never used again, so Kero has barely anything in his standard arsenal, so I do think Zim still wins. He has just superior technology that he can use at will, and they're also conveniently placed in his backpack. And he has superior physical feats and speed feats that somehow overpower Kero's Toon Force, which is very hard to do, so it's impressive that Zim can do that. So yeah, Zim wins. This episode showed me how stupid and deaf the human race can be. <laughs> Do you have any idea how many Buzz is just a toy comments I've received on this episode? Even though I clarified multiple times in both the trailer, the episode, and the commentary that I was using animated series Buzz. Sheesh, they're both space rangers that protect the galaxy leading teams of four and they shoot lasers as their primary weapon, so they do have a lot in common. And they're both expert pilots, so yeah, lots of stuff in common. It's a perfect matchup. Not much to say there, Buzz is just superior all around. Go watch the episode if you haven't already to see why. He has greater speed feats, he has a better arsenal, his suit protects him more than Fox, and all his vehicles are stronger than Fox's. Buzz just absolutely dominates him in battle. So yeah, that's pretty much all the results of all the fictional fights re-reviewed to see if I still agree with them or somewhat disagree. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be doing more as soon as we get another batch of fictional fights episodes coming out. See you next time!